Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and this is the first video I've done back properly since uh, being ill. It's nice to be getting back on things. But uh, enough about that, Let's what are we talking about today? So I thought I'd come back with a nice easy video. Well, I say easy. Um, we're going to be talking, or I'm going to do a tier list on the units in Emperor Battle for June. Um, if you've not heard of Emperor Battle for June, you've probably heard of the June series. Um, big popular RTS games back in the day by the creators of Red Alert. And I love June, I love the books. Um, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about the film that's coming out. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of their games. And Emperor Battle for June is one of my favourite RTS games. And I have a lot of experience playing this game. So I thought I'd give you a really unbiased opinion. <laughs> I'll give you an opinion anyway on <clears throat> what I think about these units. Um, I don't bother changing these on down the side, but S rank is just best. A, B, C, and D is crap, basically. So um, there are units missing, like the Harvester used to get money, doesn't attack. Uh, same with like the Carrier, things like that. This is primarily just the units that are designed to attack. I'm going to kind of go through them and tell you what they do and then place them. Um, starting up, we've got the uh, Ordos AA mine. Now the AA mine is basically, you put it in the air and any anything that's like aircraft wise goes into it, it blows up and a bunch of missiles goes towards it. <clears throat> it's, from what I remember, it's fairly effective. <coughs> you have to excuse the coughing. Um, <clears throat> but I can't remember if it's area effect splash because the only downside to the AA mine from memory is that I think if you've got a bunch of, if you've got a lot of aircraft and you just fly through it, you can, uh, you know, I think one unit will tank most of the damage. I don't, I don't remember how expensive it is, but I don't remember it being, it's not a bad unit, but I don't remember it being like super amazing. So I'm gonna put that in C. Um, <clears throat> like it's useful, but it's not, you know, you don't, you're not gonna spend, if you want anti-air defenses autos, which is who this is, uh, this, they're the only people that can build this unit. You've got AA troopers that are significantly decent and you probably, they're a lot cheaper probably. Um, <clears throat> but the odd AA mine can be annoying, so it's good to have them around. All right, now we've got the, I believe this is the Atreides APC. I'm trying to remember to go off the uh, look here because the autos also have an APZ, which I can't see on this at the moment, but I'm pretty sure this is the Atreides one. Um, and it's, in this game, honestly, it's not particularly useful. It You can load up, I think, five infantry. I mean, it's good if you've got engineers in the back of it, because you can run it into the enemy base. I, I actually have a feeling it's invisible. I am just going to double check. I do have a, a on another page here. But I've got a feeling that the um, APC is invisible. Is that from memory? Uh... Yeah, so stealthed when not moving or attacking. So you can place it, hide stuff in it, <clears throat> and then drop off units afterwards. The only downside to it is it's not particularly... The machine gun on it, if I remember rightly, isn't particularly strong. And it's only stealthed while or it's stopped. So if you've set it up at a point where you're trying to um, put one in an area, then attract the enemy units with your, with your other units, then you can run it in and drop people off. Like, in that sense, it's not a bad unit. I just think in this game, you're better off just grabbing a bunch of dudes and just storming down the door. Like, it's it's a cool strategy, and it's especially effective if there is multiple entrances to a base. But, you need to be, I think most of the time, if you've got multiple entrances to the base, you're probably going to have some stuff defending. And, you know, unless the, uh, the other person's completely focused on your attack, there's a good chance the APC isn't going to be, you know, it's not going to get in and do a significant amount of damage. It's, again, it's not a bad unit, but I don't think it's something you're going to necessarily build a huge amount of. It's good for a particular strategy, and that's about it, I think. <clears throat> right, now we've got the Ordos AA unit. These are actually pretty good. I would probably put them... Well, like most rocket soldiers, I'd probably put them in the A group. They're not as effective against ground units or ground vehicles, but they are super cheap, and they can also attack air. And when you've got a unit that's anti-vehicle and anti-air, that's, like, just a decent unit. Um... You can just have, you can just, as all those build a lot of these, they're cheap to get back, they fire fairly quickly, they do an alright amount of damage. Just against air units, they do quite a good amount of damage. Um, and I think they're really, 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 really good. Um, 
There's not much to say apart because they're similar to the Harkonnen and Rocket U guys, which we'll get to later on. Same premise, basically. It's just these ones are better against air units, and the Harkonnen ones are better against ground units. All right, air defense platform. That's definitely an A. That's an A tier. That unit is so good. Um, it's basically has an area of effect uh, or a ring around it where you you move it along. It is slow moving. But you can have it, it's good against air units, ground units, whatever. And you just literally plonk it in an area. Anything that comes into it, it will just gun down. Um, it's definitely not S rank because of how slow it is. And it, if you just target fire it, it will die. But they are annoying. If you've got a, if you've got an army or you've got a defensive position and you've got a couple of these there, they are just mobile turrets that will just wreck. They'll wreck infantry super fast, and they'll wreck light units pretty quick. They don't take they take a bit longer to kill heavier units, but you can't leave them unchecked. If you're in the middle of a fight, then you, you have to deal with them. They're kind of similar to, if anyone's played StarCraft 2, they're kind of similar to Liberators. Like, they have a zone. If you do not deal with them, they will just tank down tons of things. They are annoying, um, but they can also attack air, for, I think, from memory as well. So, you know, you can't just... Just go in there and expect to, uh, you know, be able to tank through. Like if, unless you've got a lot of anti-air, are you going to deal with them or avoid them? They will uh, mess you up. They are a powerful unit. Probably one of the best air units in the game. <coughs> Excuse me. Just going to double check that they can attack air. Yeah, it is meant for air to air, actually, but um, they can also attack. They are quite expensive units, but they are they are super good. Definitely, definitely, definitely good. All right, air drone. Um, do you know what? I generally don't remember building many air drones. I know that it's an anti-air unit only, and it protects the uh, area that it's in. But I honestly can't remember, like... So it's not a heavy armored unit. It's just designed to take out air... So it's designed to take out air defense platforms, AA mines, uh, gunships, ornithopters, stuff like that. I don't remember it being awful because it protects an area. I think it has to recharge as well. <coughs> but I don't remember it being amazing. Hmm, that's a hard one. I... Hmm. I'm going to put that in B rank because I remember it being useful, but I don't remember... It's like not an awful unit by any means, but I just... I don't remember how good it is in terms of being... Um, you know... That much. And do you know what, actually, I'm going to put it in C rank. And the reason for that is, is because if you're playing as the Atreides, who build these, you've probably got a lot of Mongoose. Mongoose are really, really good. In fact, Mongoose are probably one of the best units in the game. Um, and they can fire at air. If you've got a shed load of Mongoose, you're not ever going to need an air drone. Like, they're good for just defending your base if you're going to move out and someone sends in some anti air. They have some air units. <coughs> Excuse me. But honestly, I can't imagine them doing. A huge amount of damage like yeah I don't know I just I just think there are better units to build I think it's it's very much a-okay um, yeah not amazing all right uh, this is an Atreides infantry man isn't it just to be sure <clears throat> all right so this unit would probably be like CD rank, like like infantry are crap in the game. The only reason this one here would be a B rank is the Atreides can, when they get a level three unit, put it back in their barracks and then train a level two and then you do it again a level, uh, sorry, level rank one, rank two, rank three unit. And <clears throat> that's the only reason I would put it there. I think light infantry are, are, are crap. They are literally only good for running in mass and and you know using as a distraction they die super fast no matter which team they're on and quite frankly you wouldn't get them anywhere else but the atreides ones are actually better because you can put them back into the barracks and give them those rank ups and you can do that for all their infantry and so the atreides infantry are really really powerful <clears throat> so but other than that like light infantry are just like the worst you, you, you literally use them early game to defend but you don't want to you really don't want to use those you'd rather have like scouts uh, sorry uh scout bikes or stuff like that if you're going to have anti-infantry like not not infantry themselves they're just not that good all right the assault tank s rank i'm a little bit biased on this but it is also one of the best units in the game 
if you don't know, the assault tank is like your classic tank in any game. Um, unlike the mongoose and the laser tank, which are its counterparts, it can't it can't fire on the move, but it has it does more damage, I believe, and it also has um, uh, more armor, so it can tank a lot more. <coughs> It can tank a lot more damage than those two things, and it deals out more damage, and it's fairly fast firing. And you just, if you want to play Harkonnen, just get a lot of these. They do cost quite a bit of money compared to the other two, but they are really, really good. If I'm playing Harkonnen, I tend to mass these a lot, and even if that's just running forward, because you'll crush all the infantry in front of you, and you're, you, as long as you target fire stuff, you're fine. Like, they are a very, 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 very good unit, and probably the best of the three of them, but that is debatable compared to the Mongoose. Laser Tank, I don't think is quite as good as these two, but I think the Laser Tank is still really good. Um, but I would say the Assault Tank is, is by far the best one um, out of all of them. It just, it will just tank so much damage and put out a good amount of damage that if you've got a lot of them there's nothing that you can do unless you've got the equivalent unit or you've got stuff that's good at taking out vehicles they will just trash everything it's crazy how good they are <clears throat> the only downside to these guys is again they can't fire on the move and they are a little bit slower than the others all right the buzzsaw Harkon and buzzsaw this is an interesting unit because the buzzsaw itself can fire both its guns on a single target, at separate targets, and uh, one at a time, or on different targets together, I think. Um, it's also pretty good because uh, it has the big blade, which will run down infantry, and it will also destroy enemy spice. Um, I think the buzzsaw is probably here. This is an A-rank unit. If you Instead of building like Harkon and Light Infantry, you want to build buzzsaws. They're not heavily armoured, but you can go and mess up the enemy spice by just charging a bunch of buzzsaws through them and it will just destroy it. Uh, or you can just use them to harass. They're fairly quick. Um, uh, but they, they have fairly powerful guns on it and they will murder infantry super fast. And if you don't want to shoot them, you can just run them over. Um, biggest weakness is, like I said, this is just a bit weak. But other than that, it's, um, it's a pretty decent unit. There's no reason, again, like you'd rather build these over Harkonnen infantry. Um, uh, infantry gun at light, light infantry, basically. Excuse me. But yeah, good unit. Alright, chemical trooper. This is what the orders have instead of a machine gunner. Um, chemical troopers are actually pretty good. The only downside to them is they're like a crappier version of the flamethrower guys that the Harkonnen have. But... I would probably still put these guys in uh, B rank simply because... They are cheap, and they will murder most infantry. Like, they will die, probably, but you can get a group of these, and if, if there's infantry, you will just gas them out. They're actually pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, they're probably still Ordos's, one of Ordos's weaker units, but I do think they're worth using and just sort of charging in, and, uh, you know, you, you can kill a lot of infantry with them. They don't. Some of the, the tougher infantry, like the flamethrower guys, take more to deal with. But <clears throat> if you've got over, if you've got like ten of these guys, you can just charge them in. Don't forget, they do die quickly. But if you get a couple of gas shots off, you're killing a lot of infantry with them. <clears throat> but definitely, out of all, some of the lighter infantry, they're some of the best. All right, uh, the Tylaxu Contaminator. I think yeah, the Contaminator. This thing is a D rank. Yeah, this thing is awful. Like, if you're losing units to this thing. And if you're building this thing, like you're just doing something wrong. If you're gonna play as a Tylaxu, you get the leech, which we'll get onto later. The leech is actually good. The leech is really annoying, but the contaminators are just awful. So the way that they work is they they're basically zombies. They walk up to a human opponent, they kill them, they turn into another contaminator. If you are letting these in your base and you're not dealing with them, because they 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 are quite tough to kill, but they're super slow and they have to kill enemy um, infantry. I think. I could be wrong, but you can just run them over. I don't think they're immune to being run over. Um, let me just double check that. Yeah, so that you can run them over. So you can literally just get a buzz or anything, a tank, some, anything to just go run these guys over. They're not very good. They're one of the worst units in the game. Um, but that's the thing with the Tylaxu. If you're playing with the Tylaxu as a sub house, because you get sub houses in this. Um, if you're going to use them, you're going to get them for leeches. Because leeches are really, really annoying. And if you don't deal with leeches quickly, they can just 
get out of hand and they rip your vehicles apart so like if you're playing the Talaxu player, then don't even don't even waste your time with these. Unless you're playing as the AI, then it might be quite kind of fun. But if somebody knows you've gone for Talaxu and they see these turn up, they're just gonna run them over. They're just not that good. <clears throat> Alright, the Devastator. Ooh. So this is like the super unit for the Harkonnen. It has a missile launcher on it, it has a powerful like plasma cannon, and it can also self-destruct. It is a very, very good unit. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me um for taking damage and dealing damage but it is so slow it is one of these slow it is the slowest unit in the game probably um if you're gonna build these i didn't put them on this list but you need an advanced carrier to move it around if you drop a couple of these off in an enemy's base you are gonna wreck havoc they are very very powerful but because of how slow it is and again they rely on a certain strategy they are kind of one of those things you just have to be very careful to deal with um i think that the devastator i think out of all the harkonnen units devastator is probably b rank um and the simple reason for that is just how slow it moves most harkonnen units you're going to want to build over these unless you specifically use these guys for defense or you use them to attack with now bear in mind when they die they blow up um so you can order it to self-destruct and it has a big it has a fairly big blast zone uh, but it will also destroy when it gets destroyed it will also do the same thing So you don't really want to use these guys to defend But they are good for that if they're away from your buildings <coughs> Excuse me, then They're pretty good, but this unit is Is very specific it will take a lot of punishment You, you kind of want to run it into the enemy fire But if you are planning on walking these across the map don't do that They are so slow they will just take forever and a worm will probably eat them if you have worms on so not a good idea now i think this is an auto deviator let me just double check i'm pretty sure it is um now i have interesting things to say on this thing yeah so this is this the deviator the idea is it'll fire a missile out that will change the allegiance of the enemy vehicles basically um it can't do anything um but it basically like you fire the missile out and it will turn enemy units into um, your units for like 30 seconds to a minute or whatever it does it's it's okay like it's an annoying unit to deal with but you just kind of like deal with it I think if, if it's in the hands of someone who's fairly good what they do is they fire the missile they run away they come back they fire the missile they run away like it takes a long time to reload and uh, I think it's area of effect so you can do some stuff with it um, like against a, a Devastator, it's gonna be, it's probably gonna win that fight as long as the Devastator doesn't fire at it, um, because it will probably just fire off its missile and capture the Devastator before the, it even gets a chance to fire at the Deviator. But I don't know. It, I don't, I don't build them a lot. Like I, I get like one or two, but they're just not amazing. Um, they, they, they can be quite fun to use because you can use them to like wreck the enemies. Uh, and the enemy's our own army before they will change back. I'm gonna put it in B rank because I don't it's definitely got its place It's not a terrible like this is again. It's like the super unit of autos It is not a bad unit like when you see these things you have to target them I guess that's the threat of them is that if you don't take them out your army is gonna start infighting pretty much um, And you need to like deal with them then and there infantry are the best things against these uh, because they can't do anything to infantry. I think they might be able to run them over and that's it, but um, <clears throat> if you just get a few rocket guys on these, they'll just destroy them. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a weird pl sp uh, place the deviator because it can be really effective, but you've got to know like how you know when you're going to use it and stuff. Don't you can't let that thing be in the front. You've kind of got to fire the missile and retreat with it, and then let your their army in fight, or you you know you're taking over the, their units and and use that to your advantage. So it's a cool unit. But it's not like <clears throat> amazing. It's it's is weird. It's not something you're going to build a lot of. You're going to build a lot of other autos units uh, over this, basically. All right, the Dust Scout. Um, Dust Scout is pff, it's probably going to go in here because the Dust Scout is like the Scout bike um, is pretty much just a scouting unit that isn't um, that. It has a machine. The one cool thing about the Death Scout is that you can. There are sand pit things that you can hide in, and you can use it to sit there and hide under there. They're not awful, to be fair. They aren't awful. They're better than infantry, um, but they are uh, units that 
Uh, they're very fast. You know what? I think C is probably a bit harsh. I think the Dusk Out is definitely a B rank unit, actually. Thinking about it, it's not as good as the, the Buzzsaw, because the Buzzsaw has a much more powerful gun. It can actually shred up the enemy's um, spice. However, the Dusk Out is really fast, and you will uncover the map super quick. And it's actually got a better anti infantry gun than a infantry man. So I think for that alone, it's probably B rank, and I think it's much better than... Um, some of the other units that are similar to it apart from the buzzsaw. I think it's better than the, 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 the scout bike but then the scout bike I think does more damage so I need to I need to double check that but all in all the, the, the scout is not the, it's a useful unit because it's anti-infantry but it's also quite weak so it's kind of like that double-edged sword where like if you get a lot of them you'll mow through infantry no problem. It's just, it's just not as good as the buzzsaw. The buzzsaw has more options um, and you can destroy enemy uh, spice with it which is super powerful. Alright, the Eye in the Sky. This is a unit that I quite like. Um, the Eye in the Sky is a unit that basically flies over, blows up, drops a bunch of debris, it does damage, and then drops down a saboteur. These are actually pretty fun because if you don't deal with these, you're going to get a saboteur in your base who's going to blow up your wind traps, going to blow up your buildings. I think it's an A rank unit for sure. They are expensive, um, but you are going to do some significant damage with these. Because even if you shoot the thing down, it's still going to do an area effect damage over your base, most likely. And then the saboteur's going to parachute down. And if you don't deal with a saboteur, saboteurs will do significant damage. And you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want that. Uh, they are very, very, very devastating. And uh, they're also a lot of fun. I think they're one of Wardos' most fun units because you can do... I mean, saboteurs anyway are hilarious to use. Um, and they're really powerful if you don't deal with them. But the Eye in the Sky is kind of like an armoured version of the Saboteur, because even if you blow it up, the Saboteurs, you've still got to deal with the Saboteur, which you can shoot down uh, if you know it's coming, so that's good. But if you don't, and you leave it unattended, that thing is going to wreck, um, and you can say bye-bye to one of your buildings, most likely. So... Alright, the Flame Tank. The Flame Tank is A tier. The Flame Tank <clears throat> is a bit weak, to be fair, in terms of armour. But the flame tanks, for some reason in this game, do so much damage versus buildings. They'll destroy infantry, they're one of the best units for killing rid of infantry. If there are flame tanks around, if you've got like, say, four or five of them, and the enemy's got a lot of infantry, unless they've got a shed load of Kinjao or like, anti-tank stuff, that, that infantry line is dead. Because even if you kill the first, like, flame tank, now bear in mind, flame tanks have two flamethrowers either side. Again, they can fire both, one, one way, one the other. <clears throat> If they fire a shot, and that shot area affects a bunch of infantry, they're pretty much dead. And if you've got four or five of them, they're, 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 they're dead. Like, you need to be very careful around them. Um, Flame Tank's biggest weakness is it doesn't have a lot of armor. So, you know, I'll, you know that's... You can kill it pretty quickly, but if there are a lot of them, and you let them get near your base, they will destroy wind traps really fast. Like, if you get, a, like, a hit squad of four or five, they get into the buildings and they just all fire on, like, your wind traps. They'll knock your power off so fast. It's kind of crazy how good um, flame tanks are. But you just have to be really, really careful with them. Um, but that's the thing. It's, like, it's also the fact they can shoot in two different directions, which is really powerful. Like, they're just a really good unit. Like, they're not, like, they're, they're not as good as the assault tank, but they can, they can, they can absolutely destroy things quicker than assault tanks if you if they're left unchecked because they will just wreck so all right the flame throw man the flame get the flame what are they called flame throw infantry <coughs> excuse me um they're like a weaker version of the flame tank i don't normally build them because they're quite slow um they're probably probably b rank honestly um, and the reason for that is, is that they are, they will murder infantry, like the flame tank, but they are very slow and they blow up on death, so they will also deal damage. You don't want to drive over them because they also blow up. Um, they're, they're interesting, they're like mini explosions. Um, but they can hurt your own dudes. They, they, they do not discriminate. Like flame tanks, it's worth noticing, they do not discriminate and will damage your own units. So you have to be careful. But... They are like a cheaper alternative to flame tanks, because flame tanks are significantly better. Flame tanks are really, 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 really good. Um, but flamethrower infantry, like, they are good. They're like the chemical troopers. Now, if you do chemical troopers versus flame guys, flame guys will win. They have more health, generally. So you'd have to have double the amount of um, chemical guys. But 
yeah, flame flame troopers will just murder most infantry pretty quickly. Um, so you want to be careful, but you also don't want them with the rest of your own infantry. You want them in the separate squad because they will kill your own guys off. So don't do that. All right, Freeman Fedekin or Freeman Fedekin. I'm not sure the exact pronunciation of these. Uh, um, probably one of the best units in the game, hands down, uh, in terms of the um, sub houses you can get. Uh, Fedekin are nuts because they are invisible. <laughs> And when they uh, move across the sand, they don't attract any worms. And when they fire, they kind of like they, they fire a, like a, a voice modulated beam, and that goes through things. <laughs> so if you want a powerful hit squad, for Dakin are quite literally one of the best units in this game, bar none. Like out of all the sub houses, this is probably the best unit. You could argue Sardukar elites are also really really good. And I think there's an argument to be made there. But if I had to pick one unit, I would pick the Fedekin. They are more expensive. But you literally, you just run up to like a thing and they all just fire. And they're good against people, vehicles, buildings. They're good against everything. They're like insanely powerful. And they're invisible. Which makes them just nuts. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy how good they are. Um... Uh, there's not much more to say. It's just like if you're gonna if you're gonna pick one of the sub houses, pick Freeman, just so you can get for Dakin. Uh, they are ridiculous. Uh, let me just double check that it's actually that they're always invisible. Yeah, so you stealth when you're moving. So yeah, uh, crazy unit. Just just build these guys. Then we have the the standard Freeman warrior, which is a sniper dude. Now, you trade these get a sniper, but you've also got these guys who are. They are anti-infantry, and they're also stealth, so they're also really, really, really good. Um, they're probably a rank, to be honest. They fire really quickly. Uh, like I said, they're stealthed, and they will obliterate infantry very fast. Like Freeman are probably one of the best, if not the best, sub house in the game. Honestly, um, uh, you know, like compared to Tylaxu, for example, Tylaxu have one really good unit and one terrible unit. The Freeman have an, an amazing unit and a really good unit. Like, that's how, how great they are. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to pick a sub house, you're going to pick Freeman. Like, you should just always pick Freeman because you, you're going to have. You'd rather build these uh, Freeman warriors over light infantry. No matter who you're playing as, you'd rather just have these guys. The only downside is if you don't set them to. I think they're, they're neutrally. They will not attack. I, don't, I can't remember. I don't think they will attack unless you tell them to because they're automatically stealthed <clears throat> but if you want to take out a hit if you get if you want to hit squad people uh they're great and the fedekin are great and literally like compared to the even the atreides sniper guys who are amazing like for uh frame of warriors just fire so much faster and do a really good amount of damage so you would just get them over snipers all right harkona gunship probably uh s tier this thing is kind of broken um it's, it's like a more armoured version of the carrier, but it does cost a lot more. Uh, the gunship's ridiculous. Uh, it basically, you take off, you fly over to a building, and you just basically bombard a building. If you've got ten of these, you can destroy pretty much anything. You just get ten of them, you click on the enemy's MC MCV, hope that there aren't, isn't that much... Yeah, and even if there is, you're likely going to destroy their MCV. Uh, let them recharge, do the same again. They are powerful... <clears throat> you have to take these things seriously. They are super strong. Um, and they're just, yeah, if you just leave them, then, yeah, they, they are going to wreck your base. You need if you, you need to know the enemy is building these and building them en masse, because, again, they will they can easily fly into your base, take out your barracks, take out your factory, and take out, like, or take out all your wind traps and stuff before leaving, you know? And even if you do destroy them, you probably lost a good chunk of your buildings. But they will smash down an MCV very fast. Um, 10 is a really golden number for these. <clears throat> That's what I usually go with. So it can be a bit of a, a slow process to get there, but yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Alright, I've got the um, Harkonnen Engineer here. Engineers really, uh, like, they are powerful, and this one's got, got a gun. But, you know, all I'm going to say is engineers are good units, because obviously you can capture stuff with them. Harkonnen one happens to have a gun, so he can shoot, but the gun's not very good. Just treat him like a normal engineer. <laughs> Um, Harkonnen infantry, absolute rubbish. 
again, inventory units in this. The only reason, like, the I put the um, Atreides guy in a B rank is because you can level him up. Most of the Atreides units are, are really, really good because you can level them up and, and eventually create level 3. Now, it does take a bit of time, but the hardcore infantry guys, like, they're all right. They're going to do some damage, but they're, 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 like, one of the worst units in the game. Just, no. I actually put the scout on here. The scout can't attack. I'm going to ignore him. X Infiltrator. This is a C rank unit. X Infiltrator, inf Infiltrator is invisible and then it blows up. So it's like a saboteur, but it's invisible. Um, I know that most people, I, I, most people think the X are the worst sub house in this game, but <clears throat> I actually think Infiltrators are pretty good. If you just run them into the enemy and just blow them up, they will take out army units quite useful. Um, or you can set them up near the enemy's wind traps and then blow them up. Like they just blow up like a little, little detonations. <clears throat> they're little like suicide units basically they're not amazing but they can be annoying and because they're invisible you can use them to scout which is good um but you're gonna get a few you're probably gonna run them in run them into the enemy's like um, army and then that'd be that basically nothing more to say on them that they're, they're just very average units they have their uses but they're not super amazing all right the uh harkonnen inkvine catapult is hmm where are we going to put this? I think we're going to put it in the C rank as well. The Inkvine Catapult is a cool idea. The idea is that it launches poisonous um, materials in a uh, through a catapult because it, it's too volatile to carry it uh, in a, any kind of a capacity. It has to be chucked. Now, they're great anti-infantry units, and I believe the Inkvine stuff that gets put on the ground can be set on fire. <coughs> but, they're not very strong. And they're very much a support unit. Um, they're actually pretty good against structures. I forgot about that. Like they are quite good against structures. They are kind of like an, an artillery unit in that sense. But they just—they're a bit slow. They're a bit weak. Like they're all right, but um, gonna be set on fire. Oh, he's well armored. Apparently, I don't remember it being well armored. But like, yeah. So you obviously the the thing lands. It does an area effect damage. They're just. They're fun units. I actually really like the units, but um, the, I don't know. You, you kind of need to protect them. If you're going to use this strategy to like pepper the enemy's base or like fire stuff at their front lines, you need to protect them with assault tanks because they will just once you're up close to them, you'll just wreck them. Like they don't fire that fast, and they're really inaccurate against moving targets. So they're all right, but they're they're not not amazing. So that's the ink. That's the ink fine. All right, uh, Kinjao Infantry. This is A rank. This thing is amazing. So this is the one of the uh, uh, Atreides Infantry. It's an anti-tank gun, which, when leveled up, can be put back into the uh, barracks, and you can train more of them. They are very powerful. If you do not respect, they are quite slow firing. But if you do not respect that the enemy has Kinjao Infantry, and you just drive your vehicles in there, you might as well say bye to the, a few of them because they will just blow them up. If you've got a lot of Kinjao Infantry. Yeah, they're going to wreck a good chunk of your army, especially early on. If you've got buzzsaws, let's say, or scout units, and you just drive up the enemy's ramp, and they've got say five to ten Kinjao, you can you just bye bye. You're not gonna you're not gonna survive that. They do have a long cooldown because it's like a mounted big gun, but honestly, like they are really powerful units. And like I said, if you level them up and get them back into the barracks, and you start training at level two to level three, they have much faster fire rates, and they just they just wreck vehicles. They, um, that's what the Inkvine catapult is good for, taking out Kinjao infantry. Same with the Cobra unit, which we'll get onto. Uh, they are really, really powerful units for dealing with stuff like this, but yeah, if you don't respect Kinjao infantry, you can just say goodbye to a lot of your vehicles. They are very, very good. Very powerful. Which, speaking of the Cobra unit, it's an S rank unit. The Cobra unit is wicked. It is probably one of the best orders units. Um, it basically rides along has like a gun on it and, and can fire but they're basically mobile artillery turrets you set them up um you can you can basically contain people with these um kind of similar to the minor Taurus, which we'll get onto later on and the missile tank but you basically set these things up they're heavy armored and they will just keep firing in a like wherever you fire if you've got laser tanks with them um and you're just protecting them they will just bombard enemy units they will take out a base pretty quickly they're not amazingly against heavy armoured vehicles, but they will do a, a significant amount of damage in numbers. Um, 
they are they, they're quite frankly just they're really annoying to deal with if you've got vision of the map and you can see them and you can take them out take them out because they will just devastate like they are so good like you need a lot of vehicles to take them out um but the enemy if you're playing against a good opponent and not going to let you get near them you're going to have a line of like apcs or laser tanks with the cobra units behind them they are just really good and if they get a chance to fire at your buildings they will wreck your buildings I don't remember them doing a, much damage in siege mode, uh, un-siege mode, but, like, regardless, you should be seizing these guys up and using the long-range artillery gun, um, but yeah, very, very good unit, probably one of the best ones that they have, and it's just, yeah, it's just a really good unit, like, if, I, if you're playing orders, you need to build these things. Alright, laser tank. Laser tank is A rank. Laser tank isn't quite as good an assault tank for a couple of reasons. Laser tank, it can fire on the move, which makes it really good. And it can hover over sand stuff, which is really, really good. The two biggest downsides is if you're playing against somebody else who has lasers, they can one-shot all of your shielded units, and these guys are shielded. Now, they do have a rechargeable shield. So outside, I think it's rechargeable shield or health. So outside of a fight, that will go back up. And like I said, they're quite fast. They're fast moving, fast firing. But against anyone else who's got lasers, you will you'll just lose. You're instantly. They can use that as a way to just destroy your army. It destroys their army as well. So, but if you've got Sardaukar elites, <laughs> they also have lasers, so they can destroy them as well. Um, I think the thing with these is that the mongoose is kind of a bit of a middle ground between the assault tank and the laser tank. In the sense, the mongoose can fire on a move and fire at air, and, but doesn't have a shield, so it isn't gonna. There's not an exploitable weakness to it apart from it's a bit slow, more, uh, a bit slower moving, and I don't think the rangers is good. But mongoose are just really, really good. This the, the laser tank. Don't get me wrong, laser tank isn't a bad unit. Laser tank is fantastic. It just has really weird weaknesses that are quite exploitable. But if you're against Harkonnen and you've got laser tanks, what you want to do is you want to constantly move around the enemy's uh, units because the assault tank can't fire and move. So it's got to stand still and fire and if you and laser tanks do out maneuver them. So you do have to be really, really like, y yeah, you, you need to deal with these things as Harkonnen. They're powerful units. <coughs> if the enemy stands in front of you and with their laser tanks and doesn't move them, you will wreck them because they once the shield's gone, they have no health. So. They are a good unit though, like don't don't think just because it's one tier down that you don't want to build these. You definitely want to build laser tanks, like you can do, you can be so annoying with laser tanks and that's kind of Aldous', Aldous is like MO really. Just annoy the crap out of the, you require so much like precision to deal with Aldous, unlike Harkonnen who are going to stand in front of you and just fire everything, so. Alright, the leech, this is a B rank unit. This is the other Tylaxo unit. That way it works is it fires at a uh, like a another leech at a tank or a vehicle, and it slowly drains its health. When that vehicle dies, it becomes another leech. And the idea is that you leech tons of units, and they all just get destroyed and become more leeches. Now the reason why these are much better than the contaminators are they are really fast. They are they take a bit more punishment, so they don't die that quickly. And the only way to get rid of a leech. On your own tank is to shoot your own vehicle or use an Atreides repair uh, vehicle. Now, I really, even though I don't ever use Tylaxu, I would recommend if you are going to just build leeches because if you send them in and just start firing those leeches at the, the different vehicles and you don't and they don't die, you will end up destroying the enemy army really quickly because even if they don't. Uh, even if it's taking a while for that leech to destroy that vehicle, if you drive up to them, those vehicles, when they die, will still spawn the leech, I'm pretty sure. So it's like, yeah, they're not, they're not the, uh, they're not amazing, amazing, but they are one of the most annoying units to use. So it's worth, um, it's worth just playing them for that and just running in, being a nuisance, running out again, running in. You know, if you get like a Devastator or like high value targets, like, it's just such a pain, because that means that I, as the player, now have to shoot my own unit to get rid of it. Um, like I said, unless you're the Atreides, and you can repair them off. They are less effective against the Atreides, but they are still powerful units, and they are annoying. And uh, if you're going to use Tylaxu, that's what you go for. 
Alright, Guildmaker. You're definitely a C rank unit. Guildmaker is a big, like, wormy slug thing. It's basically a maker, big slug thing. That doesn't attract sandworms when it moves, but it also it has, like, an area of effect lightning bull thing. It's just really slow. That's the problem with them. They're not, they're not that interesting. They're a bit slow, like, they're good for infantry, but other than that, they're just, they're just there. Like, you're gonna have fun with them, but if you're gonna go for the guild, you're probably gonna build Nyab tanks, which are much, like, way more interesting to use, and much better at harassing and stuff like that. These guys, nah, they're like, they're, they're alright, but I just wouldn't spend too much time worrying about building them, honestly. They're, they're just one of those units, they're there. Alright. Next up, Minotaurus. Uh, probably A rank. Minotaurus, or the Minotaur, I think is actually what it's called. Am I pronouncing it wrong? Let me just double check. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. No, Minotaurus. It's got four guns on it. It is an artillery gun thing. It's like a bigger version of the Mongoose. This thing is great. This thing is really, really powerful and it will wreck infantry. The only downside to the Minotaurus is it has a slow reload time. If you're trying to shoot moving targets, like laser tanks, these things will probably get wrecked because the laser tank can just run around it and destroy it. However, if you have an area, like a choke point, and the enemy's trying to run up it and you have three or four Minotauruses firing into that area, especially when they get to level 3 to get explosive shots, I think, I think I remember that being the case, they will wreck. They are very, very good. They're very good at what they're for. You put a line of mongoose in front of these, and you have Minotaurus behind you, you're going to be able to defend an area very well. Infantry don't stand a chance, they will destroy infantry super quickly. Um, <clears throat> they're not so good against tanks, but they will do a decent amount of damage against them. Um, they're very slow though, that's the, the downside, is they are very slow. So if you are going to use them, protect them, and make sure you've got something that's good at taking out faster moving units. Because as soon as you've got laser tanks or anything that can fire on the move or run around them they are going to get destroyed but honestly like like the cobra <clears throat> these i mean this and the cobra like you could put make a thing for the minotaur being s rank the only reason i don't think it is is just that slow rate of fire the um cobra fires much quicker than the minotaur does all right missile tank um this is a tough one where does a missile tank go I'll put the missile tank in B. Missile tank is similar to the Cobra and the Minotaurus. <coughs> in the sense that it will destroy stuff. Very good against buildings, very good against tanks. But, once it's fired its missiles, which is like 8 missiles, has a long reload time. These things are not very heavy armoured. They're very good against air, they're, they're very good against what they're good against. Like, really good against it. Um, but it's, it's really... Um, it's really easy to kill. Now I got lucky and managed to get make one of these invisible during a game once and that was super annoying for my brother who I was playing against because I just like turn up fire and then run off with it. Um, but yeah, this is this is a unit that is a very much a support unit. It's very powerful and will do a lot of damage but it will die very fast um, and again has a slow reload time. So you don't want loads of these. But you definitely can use these to take out enemy buildings, enemy vehicles, like when tar you definitely want to target what they're firing. If you let them fire at infantry, it's a complete waste. Like, make sure you're targeting buildings or anti or air units or tanks, basically. Like, if you do a missile tank versus a uh, Mon uh, Minotaurus or a Cobra unit, I think it will pretty much destroy them. But it's also the same thing back. Depends which one fires first. If the missile tank fires first, it'll probably destroy these. If not, these are probably going to destroy it. It's very much a glass cannon. It will do a significant amount of damage, but it will die pretty easily. All right, the Mongoose. Easily one of the best units in the game. The Mongoose can, is a walker unit. It's basically the Atreides tank. has a missile launcher on the back of it. Uh, it can fire at air, can fire at ground, can run over inventory. It moves at an all right speed. Um, it's just all around great. The only reason it's better, that, like to me, it's better than the laser tank. Um, and you could argue it's better than the assault tank because it can fire on the move, but it has less health. Is that this thing can shoot down air, and it doesn't have a weakness in the sense of it does. If it gets shot by another missile or laser, nothing happens to it. Uh, it is probably one of the best Atreides units. It's super good. 
Um, and quite frankly, you should be building a lot of these. Like, if you're playing Atreides and you're not building a lot of Mongoose, you're doing something wrong. Like, they are so powerful. Like, it's really, really good. So, get lots of them. Um, the Ordos are Morsa, dude. Um, C rank. <clears throat> they're alright. Like, it's worth having them. Um, but they're not going to do a lot. Like, they're good defensively. They're kind of like, again, they're another artillery unit that's good at doing, like, its job. Which is, like, bombarding an area. Like, they're a nuisance. But as soon as you get, like, a fast unit, like a buzzsaw or a scout or anything like that, like, even normal infantry can outrun their shots. They're very good at, like, dealing damage to buildings and stationary, slow-moving targets, things like that. But overall, I don't really rate them that much. Like, it's nice to have a couple of them, but they will also do damage to your own stuff. Um, so you, you, you kind of have to use them and be aware of where they're targeting. Like, if you're trying to siege somewhere, they're pretty good. Because uh, they can be annoying and you can fire them on the enemy units before they realise what's going on. But I think I'd rather just have other units in my army. Um, but you can do some cool plays with these, at least. Right, here's a Guild Neab tank. This thing is probably... Uh, probably B rank. Uh, this thing can teleport short distances, which is super powerful. And it has like a lightning effect. It's a cool tank that the guild get. It's better than building guild makers, honestly. Um, and you can do th cool things with it. You can like, yeah, you can lightning blast people with it. You can just teleport around. You'd be a nuisance. It's not super armored, so it's not that hard to kill. But like, yeah, it's just a solid tank. If you wanted to mix up your army or you want to have a hit squad uh, and you want them away from the main army, you can like drive up the enemy's ramp and then teleport like to one side and stuff and block places or you can come in from behind and you can teleport out um it just takes a while once you use that teleport for it to recharge so you have to be careful if you're going to use it it's probably it's probably good for aggressive and defensive uses but if you are going to use them just be prepared that you can't teleport that often all right uh all those apc definitely goes in there with the laser tank as an a rank unit the apc is pretty solid um the reason it's better than the Trade's APC is that it can attack air and it's got a very good anti-air gun on it. Um, it's armoured, it can float over things, it's just a very good unit. Like, it's not the most strongest de unit defensively and it has the same problem as a laser tank. It has shields so you can wreck them. But it can carry infantry so you can do that strategy. But if you want anti-air guns, APCs are actually pretty good at it. Um, and I, I think having a mix of them and laser tanks is always a smart move if you're playing autos because that way... You and you eliminate that problem that a laser tank has, which you can't fire up. Um, and by having those with it, you do, yeah, you you just have a very good option at your side there if you've got a combination of APCs and laser tanks. And they both move fairly similar speeds, and they can fire on the move, so they are good. All right, Trades Ornithopter. Like the gunship, it is one of the best units in the game. They definitely don't do as much damage and they're a little bit more lighter but they cost less and they are very good for doing the exact same thing bombarding an area and they will wreck things so you know maybe instead of 10 you get 12 of them get a couple more and you will have the same result they are very very good um but you know the downside to them similar to the gunship is that you need to go back to the base and repair them or <clears throat> not repair them refuel them so they get more missiles and stuff but if you've got like if you keep bomb doing bombing runs with these you will just destroy stuff they are so good like like i said they're cheaper to build so that's nice um but yeah i would say if you like if you like doing bombing runs ornithopters or even the um gunship depending on which one you're playing as definitely build those okay the x projector tank d rank unit the x projector tank isn't is compared to most other things pretty awful but it's only awful because the gimmick doesn't work that well the actual concept of a projector tank is actually pretty cool so the projector tank moves has a gun on it doesn't do a significant much damage it's good against like infantry i think the idea is you can replicate your army to make it look bigger than your actual army now you can do some fun things with that but the problem in this game is you can just target the units and they're insta die and once you know that somebody's got a um projector tank on their side it's it kind of instantly loses its effectiveness in this game it unfortunately just isn't it's a cool idea that just doesn't work in execution um honestly like because it's, you can tell when you get close enough to that unit it will disappear or you can shoot it and it'll disappear or it runs out over time and disappear 
I like it as an idea, it just it just doesn't really work in practice. For some reason I put the Atreides repair thing in here. Again, doesn't attack, so I'm just not going to include it. Uh, Saboteur. That's an A-rank unit, but for sure. Saboteurs, like I explained earlier with the Eye in the Sky, run in and blow themselves up, and they are very, very powerful. And if you ignore them, you, you can say goodbye to a lot of your buildings. They will just run in, you enter a building, and then it destroys... So yeah, so basically they work like engineers. They get in your building and they blow it up, so you will lose your building. You have to respect saboteurs. They are quite quick, um, but they are so much fun to use. Like, if you're playing as Ordos and you want to do some really annoying things, just build loads of saboteurs. Like, sp spread them out. Try and get an opening for them and just run them in and start clicking on different buildings. And you just start taking out the barracks and, like, their factories and stuff. Oh, my God, they're so annoying. But they are really fun to use. When you get to do it to other people, it's super satisfying. All right, uh, the scout bike. This is the other, like, scout unit. But compared to the buzzsaw and the, um... The, the Dust Scout. It doesn't really do anything. It's like, it's fast and it's like good for scouting. Um, but it's, I mean, I think it might it might do more damage than that. I think I'm going to have to put it in with the um, Dust Scout. I feel like if I don't, it seems a bit unfair. I think the Scout Bike and the Dust Scout are pretty much on the same level in terms of very good for scouting and think it might be the Atreides does more damage. They're not as good as the Buzzsaw, like I said before. It can't cut up the enemy's um, spice and it doesn't have two guns on it but it is very fast if you want to scout and you want to like shoot infantry in that sense it's pretty good like like the dust scout i think it's pretty good like that all right uh sardikar elites um they are definitely ooh. ooh, are they are they s rank that's a good question Like, Sardaukar Elites are interesting because they, they have lasers and they also can stat in one-shot infantry. Um, yeah, sorry, let's stick them in the S-Rank. I, th I think if you're going to play Sardaukar, and both Sardaukar units are good, I'll point that out. Sardaukar and Freeman are easily the best houses. Um, the, what makes these guys good is they have a laser, so if you want to take out Ordos, they're actually pretty good because they will destroy... They will kill themselves, but they will destroy enemy... Like, I think it was shield instantly. Um, <coughs> but, if not, you've got a group of them. They would wreck. Absolutely wreck vehicles. And if you get up close to infantry, they stab them with a knife and they one-shot them. So overall, they're pretty good. Um, and they've got quite a good bit of health as well. Uh, they are just a very solid all-round unit. I do think the Fedekin is slightly better. However, I do think if, if you don't... If someone's got a bunch of these, you can easily run up to the enemy just and wipe out their army and then run into their base and just destroy everything. They are pretty fun to use. And like I said, they're good against infantry too. The extra normal Sardaukar unit, that's definitely A rank. Um, it's not quite as good, but out of all of the infantry that have machine guns, they are superior in every way. They don't die compared to normal infantry, and they are actually pretty powerful against light armored vehicles as well. If you've got a big group of these, they go like bam, 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 like that, and they fire a bunch of shots. They do a lot of damage. Um, I don't know. I've got a feeling you can't run them over. Let me just double check this. Like, but I'm pretty sure you can't run one of the Sardaukar units over, which is what makes them even more ridiculous. Um, oh, they can't be suppressed. I forgot suppressing fire is something in this game. Um, yeah, so in this game, I forgot to mention, when the infantry are being shot and they get suppressed, they start crawling along the ground. Sardaukar don't do that. <laughs> they just stand there and just blammo at people, um, which is really useful because it means you can just stand there and tank stuff and just do a lot of damage. They are really good. Like, really good. So, I would definitely recommend, if you're building, if you're going to go, if you want, like, you build one of the, pick one of the houses and then pick Sardaukar or Freeman. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're sorted because they're like the best infantry in the game bar none all right uh a trading sniper a trading sniper is probably b rank and i don't think necessarily because it's like awful i think the trading snipers are really good they're one shot most infantry but their rate of fire is so slow like it is unbelievably slow now you can improve that once you level them up and you put them back into the barracks but my god they just they just take forever take forever to recharge um, they're only good they're, they're only good against infantry don't even think about using these against tanks like they're very specialist kind of like how Kinjao are good against tanks 
Except Kinjao, I think, are more useful because they don't fire as slow. But yeah, Chinese infantry, great at uh, having a few of them. And I think level 3, they're invisible, which makes them even better. And their rate of fire is significantly better. But they are... They're only good against one thing. And uh, yeah, not, not great. All right, the Sonic tank. Um... I don't know how I feel about the Sonic Tank. Sonic Tank is very powerful. Dies fairly quickly, but it's very powerful. It's like the Framen Fedekin, or Fedekin. Uh, it fires out a, a, a sonic wave that will pass through everything, and it's it's a strong unit. You know what? I, I'm actually going to put the Sonic Tank... No, I'm gonna put, I was going to put it at S rank. The only reason I'm not is because... If you don't protect the Sonic Tank, it will die. Because it can only fire straight in front of it, and it has to turn its body to fire. Um, if you leave it just on its own, it will just get wrecked. You can't you can't just leave this thing on its own. However, if the enemy's got a couple of these, and they've got an army with them, those things will devastate. They are ridiculously powerful, and uh, yeah, you can't just... You can't ignore Sonic Tanks, because if they fire like a shot through all your buildings, all your buildings will be taking damage. They are really, really good. They're definitely, honestly, they're better than the Devastator and the um, Deviator. As much as I love Devastators, don't get me wrong, Sonic Tank's just, just better. It's faster moving. Can't attack air, admittedly, but it just has a ridiculous amount of power behind it. Uh, last unit here is the, um, the Rocket guys, who probably go in the same here. Uh, a rank as well. Rocket guys are just really good. They can attack air and they can attack ground vehicles and they're just cheap. So if you want cheap anti-air, problem solved. They're not as good against anti-air uh, uh, units like the Ordos one. But the Hark Island one's better against vehicles and honestly they are pretty powerful. So, there you have it. There is my um, tier list of the units in the game. I hope I haven't missed anything. I don't think I have. Obviously I'm, I'm not including MCV harvesters, uh, carriers, advanced carriers. Um, that's pretty much everything that does damage. Let's have a look at the top. So we've got Harkonnen, neutral, Harkonnen, Ordos, Atreides, Atreides, neutral. <coughs> so <laughs> looks like the Atreides and the Harkonnen came out the best there. But all in all, like the game is fantastic fun. This is just my opinion on the units. I think honestly this is to me this is right this is like how i rate the units and stuff but obviously other people might see it differently but yeah let me know you know hopefully you've enjoyed this, this is something a bit different i really like this game it's a really good rts and and i will continue to play it for, for many years to come anyway thank you very much for watching as always glad to be back doing videos now um if you like the video hit like if you want to see more content like this hit subscribe Links for Facebook and Twitter will be down below in the description as always. And until next video, I will see you then.